Hey everyone, this is Stephen James from ProjectLifeMastery.com and today I'm going to share with you how to make money on Amazon. There's four different ways, four different methods that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video as ways for you to get started to make money on Amazon. And I will mention that all four ways I'm going to share with you in this video, they all work. Okay, You can make money in all four different ways. However, some of them work better than others. Some of them are more effective, more beneficial, have greater potential than some of the others that I'll share with you. So at the end of this video, once I'm done sharing with you the four different ways, I'll share with you guys what I believe are the ones that have the greater potential. They're actually worth you pursuing, investing your time, your money, your energy, your effort into so that you can build your own business that's making you money, creating passive income, quit your job, live the laptop lifestyle, or whatever kind of lifestyle that you truly desire. Okay. Now, I'm going to go into each of these methods, but I don't think I need to explain too much to you the potential of Amazon. Amazon's one of the biggest companies out there. They have hundreds of millions of customers on their platform, on their website. They have so much trust in the marketplace. They're expanding globally all over the world, not just in the United States, but in India, Brazil, Australia, Canada all over Europe, um, they're, they're huge. And as Amazon grows and continues to grow, it's gonna provide you know, even more of an opportunity for people like us to build a business and make money from Amazon. So Amazon is a huge trend. They're growing massively, and I believe it's one of the best ways to get started to make money online and kind of branch off from there to build your own online brand and business, okay? Now, the first way, of making money on Amazon is known as FBA. What does that stand for? FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. What does that mean? Well, basically what it means is selling physical products on Amazon. Okay, so Amazon, if you go to amazon.com or .co.uk or .ca, any of the platforms, most of the products there are physical products. And you too can sell products on Amazon. You can sell any product that you desire, any product that you want. However, there are certain products, of course, that will do better than others. So when it comes to selling physical products and fulfillment by Amazon, the method of success with that is to do what is called private labeling. Okay, Meaning what you do is you find a product in a certain category, a certain niche or market that has high demand that you want to build your business around. That could be yoga, that could be outdoors, camping, kitchenware, cooking, self-development. There's tons of different categories and niches out there. And what you would do is you do research on Amazon, identify what's selling, see what other products are selling well, and you can look at the Amazon bestseller ranking of it because every product has a BSR, bestseller rank, that you can, you, you, you can learn to see which ones are doing better than others so that you know that if you were to sell a similar product, you can get similar success and results. You can verify the competition. There's a lot of research that you can do. I won't go into in this video. I've got other videos like that. Um, but what you would do is then you'd find a supplier or manufacturer that's already making that product that you can manufacture and order inventory. And what you do is you put your own logo or branding or packaging on that product and then you sell it on Amazon under your brand. So a simple example of this would be uh, let's say yoga, okay, yoga mat. You could find suppliers, let's say if you go to alibaba.com, okay, you can go there, type in yoga mat, and you can find suppliers from all over the world or in China or different parts of Asia that, are make, that can make yoga mats for you inexpensively. And then what you could then do is put your packaging and branding on that. Your supplier would do that for you. You order a certain amount of units, let's say 500 or 1,000 units of inventory, you then ship it from the manufacturer, okay, let's say it's in China, you'd ship it to Amazon's fulfillment centers. So Amazon, they have fulfillment centers all over the world. They have warehouses that store products for their sellers and they handle all of the shipping and logistics for you. You've just gotta have the product, send it to their warehouse, set up your Amazon listing, market, promote your product, and then Amazon takes care of everything else. So. This is a great opportunity because of how much Amazon does. The potential in the market on Amazon is huge and massive. They handle the shipping, they handle the returns, the refunds, they even handle a lot of the customer support. And then Amazon pays you. 
right? So depending on how many units you sell of that product, Amazon would then pay you direct deposit to your bank account, that money that you earn from Amazon. So this is the most common and popular way of making money on Amazon. I'm not gonna go too much deeper into this, but I've got tons of videos that walk you through Amazon FBA if you wanna learn a lot more about it. Make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, you turn on notifications for future videos where I go deeper into Amazon FBA. But I will mention when it comes to this business model, this one, the, the biggest pro of this, I'll go over the, some of the pros and cons. The biggest pro of this one is the potential, the scalability of it. So usually at first, you would identify which marketplace you wanna sell because Amazon, as you probably know, they have different marketplaces. They have Amazon.com, which is primarily within the United States. That's their biggest marketplace, okay? Then there's Amazon.co.uk, which is in the United Kingdom. There's Amazon Germany. Those two are the next biggest ones. There's Amazon.ca in Canada. There's Australia, et cetera, right? So all of these different platforms and marketplaces, you gotta decide which one you wanna sell on because let's say you wanna sell in the United States. That's the biggest market, the biggest potential there. Well, then you're gonna to have to ship your products, your inventory from your manufacturer to the United States, to Amazon's warehouses in the US. And that will then give you the ability to have Amazon ship those products to customers within the United States from amazon.com. However, when your products and inventory is in the US through Amazon FBA, you can't sell it in Europe or, or globally. You're gonna to have to then ship inventory to those other countries. So that's why it's important to make sure that you pick one marketplace you wanna sell in, have success there, and then branch off and go more international, go more global. However, you do not have to start on Amazon.com. You could start in the UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. Those are gonna be smaller markets, a little bit less potential, but less competition, but can also bring greater opportunity for you because, because of that. So that's one thing you're gonna to have to decide and determine. I will mention with this too, it does not matter where you live, okay? Um, I don't live in the United States and I sell in the United States. Um, you know, if, if you wanna, you know, you can live in Timbuktu and you could sell in the United, United Kingdom if you want or in Australia, um, you could sell in Brazil, you could sell anywhere, okay? You're not restricted based on where you live because a lot of people ask that. Now, there are certain countries, you know, that might not allow like when you set up your Amazon Seller Central account. I'll link to that below for you guys, but the website's called sellercentral.amazon.com. To set up an account, maybe your country is not listed. There are ways around this. You could set up a company in a different country. You could set up an address for your company in a different country as well. Like you can get a US address for $5 through websites like reship.com. You can set up a world first or pioneer bank account. It's an online bank account you can receive money to. There's many different ways and strategies going around that. But I've never seen anyone have that restriction as long as they're creative and resourceful. Anybody can sell on Amazon if they do some of the things that I just mentioned. But the opportunity, the potential, the scalability is huge. The potential of this kind of business, I've seen people that are making six figures, seven figures, and eight figures per year. Okay, hundreds of thousands of dollars millions or tens of millions of dollars just by doing this, okay? Now, the downside, the con of it, I'd say, would be that it costs money to invest in inventory. So there are some startup costs with this. And most businesses, of course, there's some sort of startup cost. If you can't afford to start a business, then I, I don't know if business is for you. I'd, I'd probably make some money and save some money in your job and then take that and make sure you're financially secure to start a business because I see a lot of people thinking they're gonna build a business with no money and there are some strategies but it's so much harder. It's gonna limit you in so, so many ways and that's why it's oftentimes easier to first make some money in a job or be a freelancer, do other things to make some money and then when you're financially secure, invest in starting a business. A business is something that's not gonna provide for you right away. That's maybe another downside of this is that you know, to actually launch a physical product on Amazon, on average, I'd say maybe takes about three months, right? Because let's say you have, you've done some research, you've picked a few different products that you wanna sell through Amazon FBA, and then you find some suppliers. You go to Alibaba, you find a few different yoga mats, let's say, or whatever it might be, and then you wanna first get samples. So you're gonna reach out to the suppliers and say, hey, lo I'd love for you to send me some samples so I can test it out and see the quality of it before I decide to place an order with you guys. They'll send you samples. 
depending where you live, you know, if you live in the United States and they're shipping it from China, that can take some time for you to actually receive it. It might take you a few weeks to receive the samples and check them out and determine the quality of it. You gotta get your packaging, your logo design, that can take some time as well. You know, once you decide that you wanna order from the supplier, depending on their lead time, their turnaround time, it can take a few weeks or even a month. You know, I know for me, I've sold supplements on Amazon and I actually, my supplier is in the United States because certain consumable products, you wanna source them from the United States. There's certain regulations with supplements or consumable products or beauty products you have to be more aware, aware of with the FDA and everything too. So with that, you know, even in the United States, it takes 30 days just for them to manufacture the product. So I have to factor that in every time I need more inventory, I place an order, I've got to make sure 30 days it, I have enough in stock that I'm not going to run out. So that's something else to be aware of too. Um, but it does take some time, of course, and then shipping your product, let's say from China to the US, you know, it's, it's faster, of course, if you ship by plane, by air, it's slower, of course, if you ship it by boat, by sea. However, you know, the plane is more expensive than shipping it from boat. So there's logistics involved in this sort of business. And it's more of a complex business, I'd say, for beginners. Okay, if you're brand new, that's why I always, always, always recommend to make sure that you have a good course, a training program that can guide you step by step by step by step by step, teaching you this business on how to successfully do it. But once you've got a product up, and you're marketing it, promoting it, you can have amazing success with it. You can launch your second product, your third product, or you can go more international, or you can even go off of Amazon and have your own e-commerce store through Shopify or WooCommerce, and you're not totally dependent on Amazon, because there are, Amazon's a great place to start, they have tons of customers, you can leverage that. They do a lot for you, but long-term, you don't wanna be totally dependent on Amazon. You wanna build your brand and business outside of Amazon, which is a whole other topic and conversation. So that's the first way, okay? That's the most popular way. The second way that I'll share with you guys is known as publishing, okay? Publishing books on Amazon. Now, Amazon started off as a bookstore, an online bookstore. Right? If you guys remember back in the day, it was a place that you go to buy books. Now they've pretty much kind of wiped out a lot of the Barnes and Nobles and you know, local retail bookstores because people have been buying books on Amazon. So publishing books is also a great way that you can, get, you can make money on Amazon. And there's really three different ways you can do it. One way is known as Kindle publishing. Now, I'm sure you've seen these before. This is a Kindle, also known as an e-reader. I love these, by the way. I've gotten rid, I travel the world and um, live more of a minimalistic kind of lifestyle, so I've gotten rid of all my paperback and hardcover books as much as I love them, but I've got them all here on my Kindle. So on this device, of course, I can download books directly from Amazon. I can actually search, you know, this syncs with your Wi-Fi so I can search for certain books download it, and I literally have hundreds of books on this device. So it's a lot lighter weight, and it's more practical, and it's more the future of the, where the world is going, um, you know, is, is things being digitalized and e-readers. And so this is on trend. The potential of Kindle, of course, is growing and growing and growing. Um, a lot cheaper, of course, to, to just download a book than actually having to print one and manufacture it, and better for the environment as well. So big fan of these, but Kindle is, Basically an ebook that you would sell on Amazon that people can download to their Kindle e-readers. They can download it on one of these devices or from their phone, there's a Kindle app, your iPad, your tablet, whatever it is, even your computer as well. So Kindle is great. Um, the other way is, is known as paperback or hardcover. Okay, those are the paperback physical books that you're familiar with. And then the third way are audiobooks. So Amazon owns Audible, okay, which basically allows you to be able to publish an audio version of a book that people can download and listen to you on their phone or whatever it might be. So those are the, the, the three ways that you can leverage publishing. Now, the reason why publishing is a great opportunity is because there also is a great market, of course, uh, of books that are available that, that you could publish and, and sell around many different niches. There's nonfiction books, there's fiction books, 
Nonfiction books I love because you can write a book or create one um, solving a specific problem. So for example, let's say it could be like a fitness book, it could be a recipe book, it could be you know, a, a yoga book, a meditation book, a cooking book, it could be a variety of different nonfiction. If you just have, need any ideas for books that you could publish, go to your library, go to a bookstore and you're gonna see there's millions of books there and there's thousands of different categories and niches that you could publish books in. And then there's also, of course, fiction. Fiction is more the story, the entertainment purposes that people might be buying those books. And that could be great too. I know a lot of people make a lot of money publishing fiction books. However, on the back end, okay, the back end in terms of when someone buys your book, the opportunity after that, I feel, is a lot greater with nonfiction books. And I can explain that in a bit. Now, when it comes to these books, you might be thinking, well, Stefan, I'm not a writer. I'm not a great writer. You don't need to be. The reason why I said not writing but publishing is that your role and the way that you're gonna make money from Amazon is as a publisher, meaning you do not have to write the book yourself. So for example, look at the biggest publishing companies out there. They're not writing books, they're publishing books because most of the money is in the publishing and the marketing of it. So what they do is they work with other writers or they hire writers or ghost writers to write books for them and then they publish it on Amazon through the three different platforms here and they make money from it. They market it, they promote it. So do not think that you do not, you have to write yourself. In fact, what I teach, I actually have a course that goes into how to make money through publishing on Amazon. What I teach is to hire writers. So you find the, the, the niche, the category, you do the research of course to make sure there's a high demand for the book you're gonna publish, then you hire a writer to write the book for you and you can hire writers inexpensively. You can have them do the research for you on that topic, on that book. And you can then create a great quality book and then you publish it, you own the rights to the book. So you just pay them up front a certain amount of money. You own the rights, you don't have to give them a royalty or anything like that. You own the rights, you get to publish it, you get to make the profits of it. I mean, that's, that's a very common thing that happens in the book industry that a lot of people are not even aware of. You know, most of you guys know, of course, Donald Trump, one of his best-selling books is called The Art of the Deal, which he did not even write himself. Um, you know, another person, uh, uh, Schwartz, ended up writing that book for him, but he was the ghostwriter. In fact, a lot of these books that you see celebrities, they come out and they write a book and they publish it and they market it. Guess what? They're not actually writing those books in most of the cases. They are being interviewed or they have a writer that's writing the book for them that's known as a ghostwriter, and then they're publishing it under their name and marketing it, of course, and that's, that's kind of how it's done. So the great thing about this way, there is great potential to make money from this. Uh, it's very inexpensive compared to FBA, right? FBA, be prepared, I'd say around $2,000 uh, to start with, okay? And, you know, of course, with this one too, because there's the inventory, you're gonna have to reinvest some profits back into ordering more inventory to sustain the business. Whereas this type of business, you pay up front for the book. It could be a, a couple hundred dollars, right? And I usually recommend people start off with a, a short book, a short read. There's a whole category on Amazon for uh, known as short reads. And the reason for that is that it allows you to test the market and make sure your book is selling. And then you can go back to improve your book very easily, add more content to it, invest more into it so it's a much better book. But you're mitigating your risk that way. So that way you're not investing thousands of dollars into a book or spending like a year to write it like I did and then have it not sell because then you're out all, all, all that time and all that money versus you start with a short book, very inexpensive to create, still valuable of course. You'd sell it at a cheaper price point, like you could sell it for 99 cents. And the first goal is not just to make money, it's just to prove it. You know, is it selling? Is there a market? Can I get this selling for 99 cents? Because if no one's gonna buy it for 99 cents, no one's gonna buy it for $10. So you prove the concept, then you're like, great, this is selling. There's a market here, there's a demand here. I'm gonna then improve my book, make it better. I can turn it to 100 pages, 200 pages, 300 pages if I want. And now there's a lot less risk involved because you've tested it first versus just going out there and publishing this long book. There's different ways you can do it. You could write a book and spend a year writing it if you want to. Either way works, can be successful. But my point is, this can be a lot more inexpensive uh, is a lot faster too because once you have the book file and the cover for the book, which you can get also made very inexpensively, like 
five to ten dollars, you can get a book cover made up for your book. That's all you need. You can go in and publish it, and within 24 hours, it'll be live on Amazon. Versus with this model, of course, you gotta wait for inventory to come in. So that takes a little bit longer. So this is faster. This is a lot easier. Like it's it's a simpler business. It's not you know not as many logistics involved with it. The downside I'd say with this one is the potential is just not as great as this one. For example, this one I mentioned, you know, I know people, sellers that are making a million dollars, ten million dollars a year from their business. This one, you know, it's more. I know a lot of uh, a lot of publishers are mostly making five figures. You know, I you know people are making ten thousand dollars a year, thirty thousand dollars a year, fifty thousand. You know, I do know sellers that are in the six figures. If you want to scale it up to that point, so making over a hundred thousand dollars a year which can be great, of course, because that can allow you to quit your job and have more freedom in your life too. But this one's not gonna scale up as much as this one to a multi-million dollar business. Another benefit here is you can go more international pretty easily because there's no inventory. This one, you're limited based on where your inventory is, okay? Um, so, you know, the, 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 the downsides of it though, again, is just, uh, uh, it's just not gonna grow as big. And it can be a little bit more challenging in a way to differentiate with books, right? So you do have to market and promote them a little bit more. But one great benefit, I think, of either of these methods, but also especially this one, a lot of people, they use a book actually not as a way to make money from initially. They actually use it as what is known as a loss leader, as a way that they just break even or they lose money on it because in a book, you can actually use that to pre-sell or upsell something. So let's say you have a book, but then you also have a course, like a video training program. Let's say it's a fitness book and then you have a fitness course. You could publish the book, bring in leads that consume the book, and then the book can then later on mention and promote your course on fitness, right? So it could be a great marketing tool as well. In fact, I like to use books for that purpose. Um, you can still make great money doing it and you can sell your books. You Usually, at, you know, uh, if it's a Kindle book, it's typically from 99 cents to $10. And then if it's a paperback book, because there's more expenses involved with it, you can sell it up to $20 or $30. So you know the price point's still low, but you can still great, make a great income from that. But again, the real money can be on the back end by creating other additional services or products that it funnels into. It could even funnel into this, guys, because let's say you've got um, a book on yoga, right? And you can funnel that into your your yoga mat or your yoga towels or your yoga blocks, right? And you could even then use this. Let's say you've got your yoga mat and your yoga towels and your yoga brand. You can throw in your book as a freebie. So now you're offering more value to the people that are buying your yoga mat and your yoga products because you're differentiating now and you're providing more, right? And another thing you can do here is affiliate marketing. So you can use this the people that buy and read your book to funnel them into an email list and then once they're on your email list or they're following you on social media, whatever it is, now they're a follower of yours, now you can promote other people's products as an affiliate and you can earn a commission from that. Okay, You can earn a commission by promoting someone else's yoga mat, their yoga course, their fitness course or whatever it might be. Right, So you can make more money on the back end if you set it up that way. So that's what's great about this way. Now, the third way of making money on Amazon is known as affiliate marketing. Okay, so I already mentioned that. So Amazon has its own affiliate program. It's known as Amazon Associates. If you go to amazon.com slash associates, it's an affiliate program which you can join for free. And that gives you the ability to actually promote or sell any product on Amazon, okay? Physical products or books, any product there, and earn a commission by doing so. So if you go to Amazon Associates and set up an account there, there might be some restrictions like, you know, you, you gotta have like a website to show you're actually a legit affiliate. So you can set up a, a website and blog pretty easily these days, but you can set that up, but you know, you do have to get approved for it. But once you are set up in their program, you can do a search inside Amazon Associates for any product. Okay, let's say you wanna promote a Vitamix blender, right? You go and search Vitamix, and then it'll give you an affiliate link, a link that you can then use that you can promote it, you can market it, and when people come and they click on that link, 
and they go and buy that product, that Vitamix blender, you earn a commission from that. Very cool. So you can make money by promoting other people's products. You don't have to spend the months or take the risk in this way and start the inventory. You don't have to you know, uh, write the book and publish it and do that whole sort of thing. You can just promote other people's products and this could be a great way to test things inexpensively. But the thing with this, so here's what I mention around this. The pros and benefits are that you can promote any product on Amazon okay, and earn a commission from it. Um, Amazon has the trust and relationship with people. So sometimes people when they buy things online, not as much these days, but I remember back in the day, you know, there are people more hesitant to buy things online. They're skeptical. There's fear. Amazon already has the trust. No one's like afraid to buy something on Amazon. Amazon has the credibility and the trust and the review system. They can see which products have a lot of reviews. And so the conversion rate of products is pretty high usually on Amazon. Um, the downsides though I'd say of this is that you don't get much of a commission. So the commission that they pay you because a lot of products are physical products, um, the commission can be like you know, 3%, 5%. So it can be pretty low. And especially if you're doing affiliate marketing for books or some low ticket products, you're not, you're not gonna make much doing it. Uh, the way that this method works is if you're doing an affiliate marketing for high ticket products. So products that let's say are $100 or more, that's when it can really add up. Um, I'd say way, way more than that actually, I'd say $1,000 or more, like a TV, jewelry, you know, camera equipment. Those are products that you could be an affiliate for and you can you know, make uh, $20, $50, $100 commissions from that. One benefit though of this I will mention too, is a benefit and another negative side. A benefit though, when someone clicks that affiliate link, any product, not just the product that you link to, okay, any product on Amazon that someone adds to their shopping cart and purchases within 24 hours, you actually make the commission from all of those products. So as you know, most people don't buy one product on Amazon. They fill up their shopping cart with a few different products and then they check out. Well, you can then make a commission on all of those products. Great, right? So now you can make more. However, the downside is that it's only within 24 hours. So other affiliate programs, like Amazon's not, like I don't like this about them, but most affiliate programs out there, when someone clicks on their affiliate link, there's a cookie that's placed on their computer that tracks things usually for 30 days, in some cases up to 90 days. Meaning that if they click on the affiliate link and they don't buy the product right away, they maybe buy it you know, two weeks later, you still earn the commission from that, right? Which is very cool. Not unless they clear their cookies or something like that. Um, so that's the benefit because not everyone buys things right away. However, with Amazon's affiliate program, it's only within 24 hours. So that's a negative of it that I don't like. Um, but you know, it's still something you could do. I, I do know people, by the way, that I'd say the potential of this, you know, I know a few people that are making six figures doing this, but it, it is pretty rare. I'd say, you know, like most people are making a couple hundred dollars a month or a couple thousand dollars a month doing this, but it's a lot harder to scale up. It's a lot more challenging and I don't think it's the best way of doing affiliate marketing. So those are some of the downsides of this one. Now the last method I'll share with you guys is known as retail arbitrage. Retail arbitrage. What this basically means is that you're reselling products on Amazon. So for example, let's say that you go to the thrift store, or let's, easier example, let's say you go to Walmart, and you go to Walmart and you see that on all, you know, uh, at Walmart there is, um, <clears throat> uh, let's say it's a, a, we'll just use the yoga mat example, let's say there's a yoga mat at Walmart that's on sale, right? And it's like 50% off, let's say. And let's say you go and you get it for, for $20. Well, that same yoga mat, you can actually scan on your phone, okay, Amazon's app, and actually see, you know, I wonder how much this exact yoga mat is selling right now on Amazon. And you might say, wow, this yoga mat's selling for $40 on Amazon, which means that you can buy this product, keep it, don't open it, like keep it in the packaging. You can then ship it to Amazon's fulfillment centers and you can resell it on Amazon underneath that product's listing. And if people buy it at that price point, let's say the $40, and you pay $20 for it, well, you just made $20 profit 
might be it's less than that because the shipping costs and whatnot, but you made a profit from it. So this model, the way it works is you're going to thrift stores, you're looking for deals, you're hustling around to find that, eBay, et cetera. You're seeing how much it's selling on Amazon, you're getting at a cheaper price, you're then reselling it on Amazon, you're hijacking the Amazon listing because each Amazon listing you go to, you can see there's many different sellers, right? Most, most products, there's like more than one seller. So you can be one of those sellers that people can buy from instead of the original manufacturer. So you hijack that listing in a way and then you can make a profit just reselling products. So that is another way you can go about it. This one is, you know, it's more, uh, there's methods around this where you can do okay doing this, but you're not gonna make a significant amount of money. This one is more trading your time for money versus these other ways are more passive, scalable, and you're leveraging Amazon a lot more. This one's a lot of work. But I do know people that they do it and they make a couple extra hundred bucks, couple hundred bucks per month or a couple thousand bucks. I know some people have been able to quit their job doing this. But again, it's not gonna turn into like an actual legitimate business that, you know, the, you know, these things here, you don't get much upfront by doing it, but by delaying the gratification and setting it up, it might take a few months. Now you've got an automated stream of income coming in, right? You, you, you know, it's more of a set and forget type model. Even though I don't like that term, it's not really, there's still things of course you gotta do, but it's more leveraged and automated and scalable, okay? So this one is more of a hustle, trading your time for money. You know, you're not gonna make millions of dollars doing it. You're not gonna make a six-figure income doing it, but it, it is a way that you could make money from Amazon. Now, out of these different ways, these different ways, the ones that I see that have the greatest potential that I'd actually consider doing and put your time and energy into would be physical products, okay, Amazon FBA, and publishing. Okay, I think these two are the best. I would not really get involved in this one, not unless you already have a blog, you know, you have an email list, you, you know, and you're, and you're linking to products on Amazon, might as well put in your affiliate link, right? Might as well get some of that profit from Amazon so Amazon's not hoarding all the money. You can make an extra income. It's no extra cost to the customer, so it doesn't affect them. But I usually do this with books because I link, I link to some books and whatnot, um, you know, on my blog or, you know, camera equipment or, or some things that I use that's only available through Amazon. I'll link to that and I'll use an Amazon affiliate link, but I'm not, I'm not really doing that to make a lot of money. It's pretty insignificant, but it is something you can do to kind of complement if you are linking things to Amazon already. And this one, I wouldn't really put much time into either. Um, you know, I, I just think there's, you know, the other ways are just much more better and more important to focus on. So these are the two ways that I would really focus on. Now, to really succeed at these ways, it's more than just putting up a product on Amazon. It's more than just publishing, putting up your product or publishing a book. Because you know, every product that you put up, you gotta understand that it's there on Amazon, but it doesn't have any credibility yet. So Amazon is a search engine, okay? People go there, they type in keywords, and they search for products. But if your product is brand new, and you don't have any reviews or any sales or any you know, traction yet with it, your product's probably not gonna show up when people search for it. So, you know, a lot of people have a misconception. I think they're almost gonna put up a product and it's gonna sell and Amazon's gonna do all the work and they're gonna make me all this money. No, that's not how it works. You do your research, of course, you make sure there's a demand there that people are searching for it. There's tools and stuff that I've got other videos explaining, you know, how to do research for it. But you're gonna do your research, make sure there's a market demand. You might be aware of the competition and whatnot because that will affect how well you can rank that product and everything. Um, but you've got to put it up there, then you've got to do your job to market it, to promote the book, to promote the product. So that's where you look into different ways of marketing. So let's say, for example, you've got your product, your Amazon listing. How can you market? Well, you can leverage Facebook. You know, Facebook, you can create pages, and pages, you can publish content there that then can promote your Amazon product. You could even create a, a group, a community of people around a certain topic, let's say it's, again around yoga, and you build a great community and you, you market it, and you attract people that way and you promote your product, or you can run ads, right? Facebook ads that can funnel into your, your product as well, right? So you can leverage Facebook and there's tons of strategies around that. You know, you can leverage Instagram, 
And by the way, guys, one thing you can do, so like YouTube, blogging, right? You could leverage search engine optimization and write articles. But here's the cool thing, guys. You can also, you know, you can leverage influencers, people that already have their following on Instagram. Like let's say you find some yoga experts, you know, yoga fitness instructors on Instagram. They have 50,000, 100,000 followers. Well, you could reach out to them or on YouTube or their blog and be like, hey, I've got this great product. I'd love to send it to you for free. Um, will you promote it? Will you share it with your audience? Or you could even pay them as an ambassador of your brand, right? And they can tap into their audience that they've already built that trust and relationship with to help promote your product, right? So it's a great way that you can leverage it. You don't necessarily have to create all the content and create all that yourself. You can, and I think you should, but you can leverage others the same way. And the exact same thing, guys, comes with having a book, right? You've got to promote and market your book. You've got to, you know, you know, Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or whatever it is. I think blogging and SEO makes sense because you're selling typically something someone's reading and consuming that way that if you can create a blog and have great content, and again, you could hire writers to do it for you, but the, 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 if people enjoy your blog and writing, they're going to be likely to buy your book, right? Because they enjoy your content already here. They're going to want more. They'll be willing to pay more for a book that you have. But there's many, many different ways that you can market and promote. But I want you guys to be aware of that. I want you guys to know you've got to market, promote, no matter what way that you're trying to make money. You know, this way here, of course, this is all about traffic, which is the focus to make money from, is you've got to attract people, right? Attract people to you and then get them on your email list or through your blog or content. You have your affiliate links and that's how you make money from it. So... So these are just really, the way I look at these ways, they're ways to monetize, to make money. However, you still got to market and promote and attract people to you. And that's where you have to learn the marketing skills involved. And if you want to get started with these, because I'll I'll wrap, wrap this up for you guys, but I'll share with you guys how you can get started. For learning about physical products, uh, if you enjoy my content and resonate with my message, I'd love to share with you guys more. I've done tons of trainings and videos and interviews with other inspiring, successful Amazon sellers. Uh, I'd love to share those with you. Um, They're free. All you've got to do, uh, I have a link in the description, but if you go to www.projectlifemastery.com forward slash FBA, I have a free training there. So you do have to put in your name and email address, and then I'll send you over several weeks the different trainings and resources that I have here that can then benefit you to learn more about this business, to get started with it. Um, There's certain courses and trainings and research tools that I can recommend to you as well. That's all, that's all at projectlifemaster.com slash FBA. Link in the description for you guys, okay? Now, when it comes to publishing, I actually have a whole course that teaches this. It's called K Money Mastery. And it's a course that I've been selling since 2013. I've improved it and updated it, made it better and better. The strategies are evergreen and work to this day. And like I said, it's, it's creating the book, doing the research, of course, but creating the book, the cover, and then publishing it and marketing it on Amazon. So if you want to learn that, go to www.kmoneymastery.com. If you don't want to write yourself, I'll teach you in the course how to find writers, what to look for, and I even have a ghostwriter agreement that you can send to the writer to make sure that you own the rights to the book so that you, know, you, you, you make sure that you don't have to pay them a royalty or any conflicts in that way. So things like that that I've already created that can help you get started with that, succeed, and make money doing it. So uh, those two resources, the FBA training program and my K Money Mastery program, I'll link to that below, uh, are the best ways I think to help you get started. And what I'd also do as well, guys, think about how you can have them both working together, right? So again, decide on the niche and market. Let's say it's yoga. Okay, great. If you're going to have yoga mats, have yoga books. Have them cross-promote one another. If you're going to do uh, you know, uh, meditation books, have a meditation block that you could then sell, okay? If you're going to do uh, you know, some supplements, maybe have a, a, a fitness or diet nutrition program book that you can also provide because then... You're adding the information component to your business. You can have them both sell each other. In your book, you promote your product. In your product, you promote your book. Or you give away your book for free for more additional added value. So that's how I like to think. And then look at doing affiliate marketing. 
on the back end, right? So in your book, or, um, like on your email list, your blog, etc., all around the same niche and market. So that's how I would look at it and try to uh, leverage that with Amazon so that you're, you're building a Parthenon, right? You're not building a one-legged stool. You have multiple streams of income, multiple pillars that is more secure of a business that you can actually trust that you can quit your job off of and pursue full-time. So listen, guys, hopefully this training has been helpful for you and you guys now understand the different ways you can get started to make uh, money on Amazon. The next step, guys, is to take action. Don't be passive and just watch another YouTube video and, and not do anything, okay? You've got the information. Let's do something with it now, okay? Let's take action with it. Check out the different resources that I have here, but start moving in the direction to building your business and creating that freedom. So thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed this, hit the thumbs up here on YouTube and subscribe for more videos. Turn on notifications, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.